Howdy, friend. Morning. Bible. You better hurry along now. You're gonna be late for church. Thank you. you out of jail. Yeah, what happened to his leg? I don't know, Floyd. He was all right when we picked him up. Yeah, well, it's lame now. Well, they won't leave him here. Yeah. They will put that pack on your back. You stay with it, partner. You line yourself a mess of sugar. Come on, let's ride. Expect you boys this fast. You must have rid with furs under your blankets. Well, I hope you got some fresh horses. Ours are finished. A few hours of daylight left. We'll have to be saddled up and out of here as soon as we can. Hey, say, that was some excitement you folks had over in Stockton. Them striders busting their brother Floyd out of jail in broad daylight. About those horses. Too bad about the sheriff and the deputy, though. Well, now, mister, we sure would like to draw with you, but we gotta get moving. Moving? Yeah. Oh, you got plenty of time. You're supposed to wait right here. I got this telegraph just a few minutes ago from the sheriff in Stockton. Do you know who's coming to lead your posse? Seth Campbell, that's who. Seth Campbell? Yeah, I bet you never thought you'd see the day you'd be riding with him now, did you? I saw him in Carson City, oh, over 20 years ago. Him just a-walking down the street kept those tin horns in a straight and narrow. Well, what do I tell my boy? He reads about Seth Campbell in them dime novels. Well, I remember him when I was old, about that high. He's wearing luck. I think we wait another hour or two, it'll be dark. We'll be stuck here till morning. We've been ordered to wait. Just a couple of minutes ago, you were ready to saddle up and ride out. Well, now, that was before I heard that Seth Campbell was joining us. Now, we may lose a day, but he'll make up for it and then some. We may lose a lot more.
I'm Seth Campbell. Uh, yes, Marshal. I I I'm Link Haynes, station manager. I just want to say, well, I'm awful proud. Pleasure, Mr. Haynes. This is my son, Seth Jr. He came along to learn the trade. Well, oh, it's mighty fine. Howdy. I'll take your horses. Uh, these men here, they're, they're your posse. Thank you. Good evening, gentlemen. Evening, sir. This is my son, Seth Jr. Howdy. Hi, sir. Hi. No, it's been a long time since I led a posse. Pencil pushers in Washington have had me transporting federal prisoners lately. As a matter of fact, I was on my way by train to pick up Floyd Strider when his brothers beat me to it. Mighty nice to have you with us, Marshal. Well, it's a pleasure to be... Say, don't I know you? Nick Barkley. Not Victoria Barkley's boy. That's right, sir. Well, it's been a long time since I saw you on the ranch years ago. You weren't more than yay high. How's your mother? Fine, sir, fine. Fine's the word. Victoria Barkley's a fine woman. Let me introduce you to your posse. Uh, this is Jack Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Uh, Marshal. Mike Owens. Mr. Owens. My pleasure. Jess Curry. Curry. Hello, Marshal. And back here is my brother Heath. Well, it's always a pleasure to meet a Barkley. Well, let's get down to business, gentlemen. If you'll raise your right hands, I'll swear you in as deputies. Stand up, please, Mr. Barkley. Raise your right hand. Do you all solemnly swear to defend the Constitution of the United States and California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, to the best of your ability to help you, God? I do. I will. Well, now the way I see it, the Striders will head for Nevada over the Sierras. That's the way we figured it. Now, uh, from the look of their tracks, they've got an extra animal with them, probably a pack horse. They've also got a lame horse, so they'll be looking for a fresh one. Well, now, they wouldn't dare show themselves in town, so they'll probably steal one from one of the outlying ranches. Exactly. That's why I wired to every ranch within a day's ride of here to be on the lookout for them. Now, that lame horse is going to slow them down, so if we don't give them any rest, we can make up valuable ground. Marshal, you figuring on night tracking them? Yes, I do. As soon as those horses get up here. Quarter moon's all we got. Just right for an ambush. Well, I reckon a quarter moon is all I'll need, but thank you for the advice, Mr. Barkley. I'll be on the lookout for an ambush. Striders will be moving at night, and so will we. Uh, here's your horse, Marshal. No paint horse for me, Mr. Haynes. He's a mighty fine animal, Marshal. Well, I'm sure it is, but take it back and give me another animal, will you please? Marshal, I'll be glad to change with you. Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Curry. I don't want to paint horse along at all. Never had but bad luck with them. You know, there's two things to remember about this job, gentlemen. It's skill and luck. Never underestimate either one of them. <laughs> Like that lame horse of theirs is getting worse. Ah, that's good reading them, boy. Dismount, man. Rest the horse for a minute. Death. Here. Loosen your cinches. Let them breathe. Don't water them. They get the collar. Fill your canteens if you want. Well, they're making pretty good time. No ambush yet. Well, you called it, Marshal. No paint horse. Maybe we've been lucky so far. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but that's the way I feel. Hey, I don't remember seeing you at the Barkley Ranch when I was there years ago. I wasn't there as a boy. Oh? I grew up in Strawberry. Oh. But you know, I feel that I've met you someplace before. Is that possible? Five years ago, I rode with you up in Placer County. Why, sure. Sure. Yeah, that was... Johnny wrote in his gang. <laughs> we nailed him pretty good, didn't we? Well, we did, didn't we? That's right, Marshal. You sure did. No, no, we did. We're going to do it again, son, if we all stick together. Right? Maybe. You know, it's a funny thing. 
People all over this country have put their faith in me from time to time, and the way I read it, you've got no faith in me at all. None at all. Keith. So you've ridden with Seth Campbell before, huh? Yeah. Just how come you never mentioned it? I was working on a farm up in Placer County about five years ago. Campbell comes riding in with a posse after the road game. I guess I couldn't wait to be the first in line to join up, ride with the great Seth Campbell. So? All right, let's ride. I guess we'd better be going. I uh, loosened your cinch. no good pack horse is slowing us down. He's right, Floyd. The horse is high. All right, quit your beefing. Stop here and rest him a while. Lord, we're not getting anywhere this way. Why don't we just lose that old plug permanently? Now listen, that horse is carrying something worth slowing down for. You better see nothing happens to him either. It'll be your hide. It'll be my hide? Oh, at least you forget. Me and Luke, we quit the army just to come out here and, and break you out of jail. Now, you're joining me just like that buck sergeant did. You know, we'd have been better off to stay there on the post. We ate regular and we got paid and we didn't have to run well, around. Why don't you go right on back there, then? Lord, <laughs> well, you know I can't do that. If I, after sticking a knife in that sergeant, if I ever got near that post... It's... All right! And I don't want to hear no more about how good you have it in the army. The only reason it joined up anyway, because the law in three states was out looking for you. Well, anyway, what about that horse's leg? What are we going to do? Well, we're going to try for the nearest ranch, and we're going to get ourselves some new animals. If that leg gives out first, well, <laughs> we think of something else. Now, come on, let's get moving. <laughs> About another one, Marshal. Mm, don't mind if I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, boy. Just don't tell the temperance ladies on you, Daddy. Uh, I won't if you don't. <laughs> well, then get back to the story and finish her up. There we were. <laughs> Old Bull Kimball and me staring down each other's gun barrels. No more than five foot apart. And the place was crowded with folks. I said, Bull, put down your iron or I'm going to have to burn you down. Knowing full well I'd never shoot in that crowd. Well, old Bull, he'd killed a couple of men in his time, but he wasn't pure mean. He said, Constable, tell you what, let you and me arm wrestle. <laughs> you put my knuckles down on the wood, I'll go peaceable. But you lose. You give me two hours to get out of town. Well... <laughs> I wasn't much older than young Seth Jr. here. Weighed about 15 pounds less, but I was a cocky young buck in them days. Well, what happened, Marshal? Well, Bull got his two hours, but I had him in custody in three. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, I practiced my arm wrestling after that. You know, it's a great sport. Hey, gentlemen. What about it? Any takers? No, thank you. Gentlemen, come on now. Mr. Curry, huh? All right. I'll have a go at it. All right, sir. Keith, how about you moving? There we go. Yeah. Right. On three, huh? On. Two. Three. Hi. Mr. Curry! 
Well done, sir. I thought you had me there at the beginning. <laughs> oh, it was a pleasure, Marshal, believe me. A pleasure. <laughs> well, who's next? Nick Barkley, how about you? No, 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 no. Uh, I think I better pass this time, Marshal. Uh, Heath Barkley. Come on, boy, roll up your sleeve. Let's go. You don't mind, Marshal, I think I'll pass, too. Of course, it's uh, getting late. You had a hard ride. Why don't we turn in? Well, I said I brought you along on this posse, but not as my nursemaid. Come on, boy, let's go. No, thanks, Marshal. Oh, can't let's get away with that. You got a stout right arm there. Let's get at it. Oh, well, come on, Heath. It's no shame to get beaten by Seth Campbell. Kind of an honor, I'd say. Heath, he don't fight nobody under 80. How's about if we break the Marshal's right arm, Heath? Both arms? Oh, no, no, no. Let up on him, man. Let up on him. Heath may have good reasons for not wanting to indulge in a little arm wrestling. Personal reasons, maybe. Care to let us in on them? Or are they too personal? All right, Marshal. Good, 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 good. Oh, on three. On. Want your men to get some sleep. Seth, you stand guard. We'll be riding in two hours. The marshal's a mighty proud man. He ain't used to losing. You had to take him down a notch, didn't you? I hope you're satisfied. Stay down. Stay down. It's a trap. How are we going to rush him? Stay down. Paul? Take it easy, Pa. It's, it's me. Pa, let me have that. Let me have the gun. Oh, boy. Boy, are you all right? Now, take it easy, Pa. Here. Yeah. Get back. You need a little sleep, that's all. I'm fine. Uh huh? I'm fine. Okay, let's go. Here. I'm fine. We heard something out here. What's going on? It's all right. It's, uh, it's okay. Pa uh, had a touch of pneumonia here a few weeks back. He was pretty sick. And those drinks he had tonight they didn't help him much. He'll be all right. He'll be just fine when he gets a little sleep. Huh, Pa? Uh, one of us is going to take over the watch. I'll do it. All right, Owens. Well, you know, maybe you shouldn't come on this posse. But the doc said you needed more rest. Son, I had to come on this posse. 
I don't know how many more posses I got left. I wanted you to come with me to give you the feel of things while I still had the chance. I know that, but you got to take care of your health. There are only two things in this world that mean anything to me, boy. You and the way I do my job. Now, that's all I've got to leave you. What I know about being a lawman. Look, you've given me enough already, Pa. I just hope I can do as good as you. You're going to be better than me. I know that. But I've got to teach you while I still got the chance. Do you understand that, son? Sure, Pa, I understand. Turned out to be quite a trip, isn't it? Yep. Well, I don't know. I guess maybe I'm better off here than I would be in town. I'll let Jack Purdy talk me into Squire and his cousin to the social tonight. <laughs> What'd she look like? Oh, no, never saw her. I do know one thing. She looks anything like the rest of them Purdy's. I'm better off on this posse. Marshal Campbell. Could be his kid's right, you know. Old man. Long, hard ride. Just over a bout with pneumonia. Too much to drink. He'll be fit as ever by morning after a good night's sleep. Could be. You don't think so? Huh? I don't think so. Heath, what is wrong with you? You've been dropping hints all along and running away from them. That posse in Placerville. I never was really quite sure in my own mind what happened there. So I never said anything. You were after the road gang. Like the marshal said, we nailed him, all right. But what he didn't say was we lost three good men doing it. Oh, that happens, Heath. It happens. Nick, I don't think those three men had to die. So you're blaming Campbell? I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just trying to think it through, see it as it was. There was the roach ready to surrender. There was Campbell, yelling, take them, get them, take them, they're ready for the taking. It was like he wanted to fight. It was like he was out of his mind. Now, you could be dead wrong about that, Heath. I could be. You know, the road gang is a pretty tricky bunch. You don't hold up a dozen banks and get away clean, you know. Could be the old man thought they were uh, setting a trap for him. Or maybe he knew something you didn't know. Maybe. Maybe if I'd tried stopping him, those three men wouldn't be dead. Get some sleep. All right, boys, drink up. Let's get going. Today's the day we bring in the Striders. Feeling better this morning, Marshal? All right, let's get going. Before that trail gets cold. Oh, Wilson, I take a look at your horse. You better check his left rear shoe. Seems loose to me. Oh, and put that fire out. Well, he uh, looks to be in pretty good control of things. It looks to be. Floyd, this animal's all give out. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to get rid of him. What are you going to do about that pack? Uh, you're going to ride up ahead to one of them ranches and come back with another horse. Two if you can. Now get moving. All right, fine. See. You. All right, come on. Luke. Help me get that pack onto my horse. I'd be nice and careful now. We're going to need this baby. Coming up from behind us. I've seen them from the top of the ridge. I don't know how many of them there are. They're too far away. 
There'll be the posse coming out of Stockton. But we'd better get out of here. Turn that animal loose, Luke. Let me up behind you, Deep. All right. Boys, the trail's heating up. What do you make of these tracks, huh? Well, there's, uh, there's only three horses now, Pa. You telling me they split up? No. No, I'd say that huh? they uh, got rid of that lame pack animal of theirs. They probably shifted whatever it was carrying onto one of the others. That's two men are riding double now. That's right as rain. You got to track this ice, huh? <laughs> now, men, we'll be tangling with them soon. Now, some of you that haven't ridden past, you're probably a little nervous right about now. Don't be, because once you get into it, it'll pass, believe me. The important thing is to do what I tell you. Remember, I've been at this for 33 years. Now, just have faith in me and and do like I tell you. All right, let's ride. Looks like the end of the trail is a ghost town. You sure put them in our laps, Marshal. You're going to be mighty surprised. I don't know about that. I don't like those three horses out there. Just like nobody had a care in the world. We'll dismount. We'll go up on foot. It's a Gatling gun. Wilson! Hurry. I want you to take up your positions on the other side of the wall over there when I give you the word. And then when we start firing, jump the wall and rush them. Seth and I will follow you. And the Barclays will cover us and then come up and help us finish them off. All right, go. Get ready. Marshal, sure there's no cover out there. They'll be cut out. We're not going to let them get away. We're going to rush them now. Well, they're not going to get away. Their horses are back there. At least wait till dark. I gave those men a lawful order, and by heaven, they're going to carry it out. We're going to rush them. Now get ready. Marshal, we'll get those men, but rushing a Gatling gun in broad daylight is suicide. You've been given a lawful order. Now carry it out. You can't you move out of there. kept going. Marshal, you saw what happened. Maybe he's right, Pa. Don't you turn coward on me, boy. I take care of my men. That gun's already killed two of them, Marshal. Seth, you and me are going to rush them. Let's go. Hold it, Marshal. You know what you're doing, don't you? You're interfering with a federal officer in performance of his duty. Nick. Try and talk some sense into him. I'm afraid I can't do that, Marshal. He's right. I've got to go along with him. Suit yourself. You shoot me, it'll be in the back, boy. This is still my posse and my boy and I are going in there. 
Come on, son. Pa! Pa. I didn't want to have to do that. Now listen, boy. Two men are dead because of that gun. We keep rushing it head on. We're all going to be dead. We're going to need some help. Jess, get down the other end of this wall. Give him something to worry about. Sorry. Seth. Seth, let's get down to Swanson's ranch. It's about 10 miles down the road. Let's go in Swanson to give us some help. What about my pa? Oh, wait a minute. Nobody's going anywhere. This is still my posse. Oh, you take it easy. I'm going for help. Nobody's going anywhere. This Stay is... Stay here. I'm going. No, you're not trying to... Give me a son. Carry it. Back. It's not your posse anymore, Marshal. Boy. Boy. Look here. Yeah. Looks like they're going for help. Yeah, we better clean out what's left of them fast. Now, when I start firing, you bust out, see if you can flank them. Now move, I'll cover you. All right. You want me out of here? All right. I'll ride out of here. It's your posse now. And may God help you both. things to do. 
Better get these bodies back into town. Round up the horses, gather the men. Where's Seth Jr.? He was sent back for help. Help? Oh, yes. I remember. Let's get busy. Come on, give me a hand. Dead, Marshal. Just turned 18. Wanted to be a lawman. You're so happy being with me. Give me a hand, will you? Riders are dead. Wilson, Owens, and my son. I'll tell you what happened as soon as you get this man to a doctor. He's hurt badly. Now I'll tell you what happened. This man, Heath Barkley, aided and abetted by his brother here, disobeyed my orders, attacked me physically, and took over the posse. Heath Barkley? Nick? Yes, and I'm preferring charges against both of them for preventing me from doing my duty. Marshal, you know what happened up there. Furthermore, my son's death was due directly to their act. I want you to arrest these men, Sheriff. Charge is murder. call on you, Victoria, but somehow, after all this... Seth, I wanted you to know how badly I feel, how badly my whole family feels about your son. He was a good boy. He always tried to do the right thing. That's the way he died. I knew you'd understand, Victoria, because you've always been an understanding woman. I remember your kindness to me the first time we met. Do you remember where that was? Emily Fletcher's party. Yeah. I was a big, clumsy youngster. So shy, I didn't dare look at a girl. And then you came over and you put me at my ease. Before the evening was over, you taught me how to dance. You came here to talk about your sons, didn't you? Seth, I want you to drop these charges against my boys. I can't do that. But you've got them up for murder. They're not murderers. What they did amounted to murder. They did what they thought was their duty. Their duty? Interfering with the proper authority. Attacking an officer trying to do his job. Was that their duty? At the time they took over, were you really the proper authority? Well, at the time they took over, I had a commission as a federal officer. I had warrants for the Strider brothers' arrest in my pocket. And I had duties that I was sworn to carry out. Yes, I'd say I was the proper authority. He says... I know what he says. But I'm interested in what you say, because I respect you, Victoria. Now, after seeing me and hearing me, would you say that I look or sound like an insane man? Aren't I pretty much the same as I've always been? Neither Heath nor I ever said you were insane, but there are such things as, well, lapses. I don't have lapses, Victoria. Your son is dead, killed by the Striders. 
Now, putting Nick and Heath in jail for the rest of their lives is not going to bring him back. You don't understand. All my life, I tried to uphold the law, and that's what I'm trying to do now. And the fact that you and I have known each other for many years cannot alter that. My son, Jared, is going to be defending his brothers. Now, he'll do that in every way he can, even if it means destroying you. I beg you, Seth, I beg you, drop these charges right now. Otherwise, it will... Otherwise, it will wreck all our lives. I can't do that, Victoria. See, you don't seem to understand. It isn't only your sons who are on trial here. In a way, I am too, because if they're right and I'm wrong, then I'm a crazy old man who's not fit to be a marshal. And if I can't be that, I might as well be dead. There's another witness, Curry. Now, he'll no, testify no, that... Jess Curry died of his wounds this morning. I hope you understand how I feel about this case, Jared. I've always had the greatest regard for you and your family, you know that. But I've got to prosecute to the limit, that's my job. And I can tell you, it's not gonna be an easy one for you. I know that, Dave. This business about Campbell being unbalanced. I've spent a good amount of time with him the last few days. There's nothing wrong with that man. Him go to pieces in a fight? It's hard to believe. Well, I intend to prove that that's exactly what happened. Oh? Well, then you're ready for court on Friday. As a matter of fact, I've got a favor I want to ask of you. Just a minute. You're going to ask me to agree to a postponement. I'm afraid that's impossible. No, no, no postponement. I want you to agree to a pretrial investigation at the site of the alleged crime just to see if it was reasonable to rush that Gatling gun. <laughs> Not so many years ago, Seth Campbell and two soldiers charged up a hill into the face of a platoon manning a battery of cannon. Now, maybe that was unreasonable, but the President of the United States personally pinned a medal on Campbell's chest. And I say it was a different Seth Campbell in a different situation. Different? In whose judgment? Nick's, Eats, you, and you. If you were in a jury, would you accept their word over that of a professional soldier, a professional lawman? Dave, all I'm asking is that we go out there and see for ourselves. There's nothing to see, nothing. Nick and Heath claimed that it was suicide to rush that Gatling, but Campbell rushed it, and he not only survived, he killed Floyd Strider. Now, even if he'd failed, they still had no right, legal or moral, to defy his authority, because they had sworn an oath to obey him. And what if he wasn't fit to command? They had no right to make that judgment. Dave, these are my brothers I'm defending. And it was at this point that you gave the order to rush that Gatling while Nick and Heath covered. That's right. Was that when... That's when Heath Barkley tried to prevent my orders from being carried out. But those orders were carried out, weren't they? The man was killed. I object. I mean, Jared, uh, I think you're forgetting yourself. The marshal isn't on trial here. You'll have a chance to cross-examine in court. No, Mr. Tagler, I think it's high time that this entire thing was straightened out once and for all. All right. Heath, what happened next? That's when the marshal ordered another rush. And you thought that was a mistake? To rush that tower in broad daylight without cover? Yes, I thought it was a mistake. And I did, too, along with Curry. Wait a minute. He can't speak for Curry, Jared. And the rest of this is merely the opinion of your clients. All right, let's get on with it. By all means, Mr. Barkley. It was at that point that your brothers attacked me and took over the posse illegally. You deny that, Heath Barkley? No. I really don't know what you're getting at. As far as I can see, this uh, whole thing merely strengthens the position of the prosecution. Now, I don't mind, but you really feel you want to continue? Yes, I do. Marshal, was your son with you when you came to? Yes, he was. What condition were you in? Well, other than a slight headache, I was fine. And that's when Seth Jr. left you. Yeah, yes, it was. The, uh, the fighting continued. Uh, Seth went for help. What happened then? Uh, well, as I say, the uh, fighting continued. And... Well, it was then that I made a resolve that I was going to get out of it. Matter of fact, I'd been physically forced to stay out of it. I decided to give the Barclays their head. So I... I left... But I was still head of that posse, Mr. Barkley, and I wasn't going to let the Striders get away. I don't see any reason to continue this. The main facts have been established. Not quite. 
Seems to me we still have a question of the Gatling's field of fire. Now, I suggest that we set the conditions up as they actually were when the fighting broke out. Marshal, I've got a man up there in that tower. He's going to fire that gun on my signal. Can you remember where everyone was when you ordered them to rush that gun? Yes, of course. Wilson and Curry, uh, they were behind the wall there, positioned to rush. And... Well, the rest of us were all right over here. Are you sure we're safe from the bullets here? Oh, yes, we're safe here. Are you going to tell me that a rational man would send anybody into this field of fire? What's all this nonsense about a field of fire? When you're in a firefight, sir, you don't sit there like a rat in a trap. You attack. And that's when you mounted your horse and jumped the wall. Yes, that's right. That's when I mounted my horse and jumped the wall. And if I hadn't, your two brothers would have been slaughtered. Slaughtered? Heath and Nick were safe from the Gatling gun behind the wall. Safe, were they? Well, one of the Striders had flanked them, and if I hadn't spotted them, they both would have been killed. Nick and Heath were busy with two of the Striders. Floyd was up in the tower with the Gatling. Now, where did you spot another Strider? Right after I'd mounted my horse. Spotted him in the alley down there. I wheeled, and I fired. You wheeled and fired where? There. Saddest things I've ever done, putting him on that train. How was he? Oh, very confused. I, I, I don't think he'll ever get used to the idea that his, his son is gone. I have a great career end like that. Well, you all did the best you could. By the way, we've been invited to the Claytons for dinner tonight. Oh? Oh, say, Nick, that reminds me. What? Sarah Purdy's going to be there tonight. Oh, well, now, that's uh, mighty fine. Uh, just too bad I'm too tired to do much of anything. Oh? Well. Well, she probably wouldn't have any time for you anyway. You're just a little bit late. Why? Well, since you missed that last social, she's just about had her pick of admirers. Uh, ha, ha. <laughs> You're not talking about the cousin of Jack Purdy. Mm -hmm. Oh. Big green eyes, one of the prettiest girls I've ever seen. Uh, uh, you know, I haven't seen the Claytons for a long time. I think I'll go alone. Do tell. That's too bad about you being tired, Nick. Yeah, we'll be sure and give me your regrets. Pretty green eyes, huh? Oh, beautiful. Heath, where do you think you're going? Well, I'm just going up to take a bath. I'll flip it for the tub. Well, how come? Well, I haven't been to Clayton's in a long time. Call it. Well, I thought you was tired. Tired? I want to get out among them, too. Start dancing. Call it. Well, heads. Sorry, old man, you lost. <laughs> Work like a charm. <laughs> That make you never learn. <laughs>
Matt, how are you? Just fine. Come on over here. I want you to meet my brother. Keith, this is Matt Springer. Pleasure to know you, Keith. Hey, you look marvelous. And you look prosperous. Well, I got a hundred suit of clothes, a 40-room mansion in San Francisco, but I am still the hungry kid that you knew in law school. <laughs> Can't get over how well you look. Backwoods law must agree with you. Well, now, I wouldn't exactly call Stockton backwoods. Yes, I know. I hear you've been doing pretty well yourself, as a matter of fact. Cattle, horses, gold mines, and a couple of thousand acres of timber. I would be happy to take off your hands if you will accept my client's generous offer. Now, Nat, that's what surprises me. What? Well, a famous lawyer like you involved in something so mundane as land purchase. Do I detect a note of envy in that statement? No, no, just surprise. Gentlemen, I'll tell you a little secret. Only a fool gets so famous that he turns down an honest dollar. Tomorrow, the hotel, I'll buy some lunch. You two go ahead. I wouldn't want to get in the way of an old college reunion. Well, all right, but don't you get lost. I want you to witness some signatures later. Tony says he will. Come on! Charlie, get down from there. Three bottles, Charlie. I'll make a tree, yeah? Come on now, Charlie. I'm counting on you, boy. What do you think, Doc? Well, I think you owe me twenty dollars. I mean him. I mean him. <laughs> Mr. Barkley, I'm only a dentist, but if you want my unprofessional opinion, I'd say he's still among the living. He got what he deserved. Came in here begging for booze. Oh, careful now, Gus. You're desecrating a sacred cow. Oh, Charlie Whitehorse here is an honest to goodness war hero. That's enough, Parker. Don't get yourself all riled up, Heath. Gus, here's an old friend, second Georgia Volunteers. Just want him to know the truth about Charlie so he wouldn't call him a bum. See, old Charlie here's got a nose like a hound dog. One day he's sniffing around Chickamauga when he suppose he smelled. Booze? No, sir, he smelled an ambush. Saved his whole regiment, including Mr. Heath Barkley here, who's been... Licking his boots ever since. You hurt this man again, I'll kill you. Biggest eater in the regiment. In fact, you were the only man I ever knew that actually liked hardtack. I think about those days. You know, we got a half a dozen Bronx that need busting. You get yourself in shape. I'll talk to Nick. Nick would never take me back. He would if you'd quit the booze. Well, it's a lot easier than falling off balconies, isn't it? I don't know. Charlie, I'll help you. Take you to our lion shack, dry you out. Whip you like a father if you even mention whiskey. I never knew my father. I asked about him once and my mother said he died in a saloon. Runs in the blood? Is that what you're trying to say? Listen, I saw you refuse whiskey while the doctor was cutting steel out of your body in four different places. You never even tasted the stuff until this town tried to make you a hero. Charlie the Conqueror and Hero. I never wanted it. You mean you couldn't handle it? I just wanted to be left alone. You let all the backslappers and handshakers turn you into a drunk. 
Let them turn you into the town bum, and that suited you just fine, didn't it? Charlie, all you got to do is say yes. I'll make sure you've got that job. You can start just as clean as the day you were born. Tomorrow morning, you'll be at the ranch. At six o'clock sharp. You know, I was just thinking. Maybe we ought to invite Mr. Springer for dinner. Roast pork and apple pie might make him a little more receptive. <laughs> Don't kid yourself, Mother. He's not interested in the home cooking. All he wants to do is go back to San Francisco and tell that client that he got the land for a lot less than he expected to pay. You're not going to give in to him, are you? Oh, we'll shout at each other for a little while and both agree on the price we knew it was going to be all the time. That sounds like a lot of foolishness to me. Yeah, that's the way it's done. Aren't you going to eat your breakfast? What time is it? It's about 8 o'clock. You don't really expect Charlie to show up, do you? He just might straighten out if people around here would give him a chance. How many chances does it take? Why? Why, please? Please! This is an act of reverence. And it deserves your most reverent attention. Come in here, boy. You just made the sourest mistake of your life. Sheriff! Sheriff! This way, quick! Murder! Wayne Murder! I'll handle this report back. Don't waste your time. As dead as you get. And if Doc Tully had hit him with an axe handle, I'd be dead as Parker here. How about it, Doc? It's true, I saw it. He barked and shot Parker down like a dog. Too bad your brother wasn't killed. It'd been easier than hanging. Keith, are you all right? He's got a lump in his head, but I don't think it's serious. Jared, they say I shot Parker. I know. I might have killed him with my bare hands, but not with a gun. Two eyewitnesses saw him shoot Parker. Three more saw him come in the barn, and maybe a dozen others heard him make threats. And the barrel of his gun was still warm when I got here. Heath, tell me what happened. I walked into the barn. I saw Parker in it. That other friend of his. Go ahead. That's all I remember. He's got a bump on his head. It's a wonder he can remember anything. Two eyewitnesses saw him shoot him. Said they saw him. 
I'm not a lawyer, Jared. I'm not going to argue with you. But this is something a jury will have to decide. Saves a hundred lives. When he dies, three people. Private Charlie Whitehorse, killed in action by a barroom dandy and a second-rate traveling dentist. Hold at me. Yes, sir, don't you worry, Tom. Now you take a big swig out of it. Big one. Ain't gonna hurt you. You feel better, don't you, huh? Afternoon, Jared. Afternoon, Doc. Don't let me interrupt. Let's go right on with whatever you're doing. Anything particular you want? No. Just taking a walk, Doc. I think a lot better when I walk. I hear they got a date set for the trial. A week from Wednesday. Judge Lansbury. What a mess. What a terrible mess. That little stunt that killed Charlie, Doc. People say that was your idea. God forgive me, I never thought he'd do it. Well, I wouldn't worry too much. Man's liable to think up all kinds of crazy things when he's had too much to drink. You'd like to make a fool out of me, wouldn't you? You'd like to get me up on that stand and say old Doc Tully was drunk, that this whole thing's a figment of his imagination. But it isn't. It happened. I saw him. He was insane. He shot Parker down like a dog. Where were you when the shots were fired? Well, I was over there by the door. Why'd you come in here? Why'd you go back in the barn with Doc Tully? I come to get some help. You must be some kind of a clairvoyant. What's that? You came for help before the shots were fired? Obviously, you knew something was going to happen. Well, I didn't figure they were sitting down to a game of cards. Did you see Parker go in the barn? No. Then how'd you know he was in there? He guessed. The same as your brother. Mr. Vanderveer, what a coincidence. I was just reading your statement over at the sheriff's office. Did you like it? Fascinating. I didn't believe a word of it. The sheriff does, and the jury will. What surprised me the most was that part about your being a land speculator. Well, that shouldn't surprise a smart fellow like you. I don't remember ever seeing any deeds registered under the name of Vanderveer. Atlas. That's the name on the deed. We were partners. Until your brother shot him down like a dog. You and Doc Tully keep using that same phrase. Shot him down like a dog. It's an adequate description. Funny you both should come up with the same one. Not as funny as that story your brother came up with. I'll bet he'll swear he doesn't remember a thing. Right up to the day they hang him. We brought you some dinner. No, thanks. I'm not hungry. Oh, we saw Heath. Yeah, he finally found out what's wrong with old Sheriff Madden's stomach. It's his wife's cooking. Hey, we got a letter from Audra. Rained the whole time she was in Rome. She got three proposals the first day she was there, though. One from a bona fide duke. How do you like that? Jared, do you think it's fair not telling Audra about this? What good would that do? And, Mother, will you stop fussing around with that? Well, you have Look, to have I something. Said I'm not hungry. Oh, well, you better come on home and get yourself some rest. You're going to be all burnt out by the time that trial starts. You take care of you, Nick. I'll take care of me. Well, maybe Heath's memory will come back. Even if it does, even if he screams his innocence to the heavens above, two eyewitnesses are going to stand up in court and swear that they saw him shoot Parker Atlas down like a dog. Parker Atlas wasn't worth his salt. That may be, but he was the son of one of the most respected ranchers in this valley, and don't think that won't count with the jury. And you want to talk about motive? There isn't a man, woman, or child in Stockton who didn't know how he felt about Charlie Whitehorse. Jared, I'm shy. I saw a light here. I didn't know you had company. That's all right, Nat. Come on in. Um, Nathan Springer, this is my mother. How do you do, ma'am? My brother, Nick. Howdy. How do you do, Nick? What are you doing here, Nat? I thought you went back to San Francisco. My wife threw me out of the house. 
She literally threw me out of the house. She said, Nat, you haven't had a vacation in six years. If you don't get some rest, you're going to drop dead from a heart attack. That's all I had to hear, so I grabbed my bag, came back to Stockton, found the softest bed at the hotel, and there I intend to sleep for two solid weeks. Well, I hope you come out of hibernation long enough to have dinner with us. It would be a pleasure, ma'am. Oh, by the way, Jared, I've got some news for you. The news out of San Francisco is Danny Manis is going to prosecute your brother. Who? He wants to be governor, ma'am. You get to be governor by prosecuting cases that give you publicity. Is he any good? Well, let's put it this way, Nick. He hasn't lost a case in five years. Oh, I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. He'll be up against the best. Well, I, uh, I guess I'll run along. Uh, pleasure meeting you, ma'am. Nick, pleasure meeting you. Sir. Jared, if, uh, if you need any help, just, uh, just holler. Just a little vacation, huh? May we proceed with the selection of the jurors, Mr. Mannis? You're Mrs. Bacon, aren't you? Mrs. Florence Bacon. Yes, sir. And now, Mrs. Bacon, are you acquainted with the accused? Well, I know who he is. Have you formed any opinion concerning his character? Well, he always seemed to be a real nice young man. Mrs. Bacon, are you aware that nice young men are capable of savage and lawless acts? They're capable, shall we say, of murdering other nice young men in fits of brutal rage. That's a totally inflammatory remark. It was not a remark, Mr. Barclay. It was a question. Your Honor, I must ins If I follow Mr. Manis correctly, I think he wants to know if this lady is capable of rational judgment, which is well within the limits of proper inquiry. This juror is acceptable to the prosecution, Your Honor. You're smiling, Mr. Hudson. Is there something about these proceedings that amuses you? Very well, then. Let me ask you this. One of the prosecution's star witnesses in this case is a known drunk. Objection! Would you be willing to take the word of a drunk in a case that carries the possible penalty of death? What kind of an omniscient being do you think you are? Apparently, he knows what I'm going to do before I do it. Now, wait a minute. Everyone in town knows you're going to use Doc Tully. Silence. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. Before, he was bawling Jared out because he busted in. Now he's doing the same thing. Order. Any more of that, and I'll try this case before an empty courtroom. Sit down, sir. Gentlemen, I think we had better adjourn until tomorrow morning. Come in. Oh, Victoria. You wanted to see me? Yes. Please, sit down. Whoever invented these things didn't have summer in mind. I'll wager ten years from now, judges won't even be wearing them. They're a holdover from the Middle Ages, when people were awed by ceremonial ritual and pomposity and all the rest of it. Victoria, I'm not even going to comment on Nick. But, Jared, that's something else. That's something very, very dangerous. I know. A doctor doesn't operate on a member of his family. How can you expect a lawyer to act with any degree of emotional stability when he's defending the life of someone he loves? What would you advise? Get him off the case, Victoria. I don't care how you do it, but do it. Otherwise, Heath doesn't have a chance. Jared? Well, which was it? That famous story about how he took you to your first dance? Or one of his enlightened lectures on the obsolescence of the law? I saw you go into his chambers. Jared, Judge Lansbury sent for me. He's concerned about you. He feels that because of your personal involvement, you could use help. 
I'm surprised he didn't ask you to have me withdraw from the case. You know, if this weren't so tragic, it'd really be funny. Daniel Manis, that great champion of justice, who'd sell his rotten soul for one line of publicity, comes all the way here to prosecute Heath. The presiding judge tells me I need help. And by sheer coincidence, one of the best lawyers in the state just happens to be registered at the local hotel. Because his wife throws him out of her 40-room mansion and tells him to go take a little holiday. Manis and Springer. Those two alley cats. They've been waiting for the last five years just for the chance to tear at each other's throats. But if Springer could help us, does it really matter? That's the funny part. It does. There's not a thing I can do about it. I'll let the record show, Your Honor, that in addition to myself, the defendant will be represented by Mr. Nathan Springer of San Francisco. nothing to say, huh? Mr. Barkley's questioned me a dozen times. I'm tired of being questioned. That's what Manners told you to say, isn't it, Pete? Yeah, I don't have to say nothing uh, until he puts me on a stand. Well, that's true. That's true indeed. Just a darn shame. What was it? Little fellas like you, always getting caught in a squeeze. What do you mean? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Mm, not to me, it's not. Pete, let me give you a little lesson. Money is power. In San Francisco, I could have you killed for a dime. I saw what I saw. Oh, I'm sure you did, Pete. Mr. Springer, I saw what Good I evening, saw. Good evening, Mr. Perkins. Come on in. Here's your answer from Chicago. You married, Mr. Perkins? No. Nope. Who do you talk to mostly? Now look, mister. Anything that comes in over my wire is strictly confidential. An honorable man. Well, now that's hard to come by these days. Thank you, sir. Heath was out of his mind. Insane. He fired once. Bam! He fired twice. Bam! And then Parker failed. Then I went back here. And I got this axe handle and I sneaked up on him. And I got, wham, right over here. Yeah, like Doc, it. yeah, fine. That's very dramatic. Don't play games with me, Doc. I've had you investigated by the best detectives in this country. Now that we uh, understand each other, I don't suppose that you'll deny that you are married to a woman whose maiden name is Vera Henderson, who lives at 24 Elm Street, Chicago, Illinois? Well, what's wrong with that? Well, nothing, Doc, nothing. Except that you are also married to a woman whose maiden name is Alice Duggan, who lives at 111 Randall Terrace, Kansas City, Missouri. You're trying to blackmail me, that's what you're doing? Oh, Doc, temper, temper. The first time Charlie Whitehorse fell from that balcony. Now tell us what happened immediately afterwards. Oh, everybody gathered around. And did the defendant threaten Parker Atlas? Well, I'm not sure. You're not sure. What do you mean by that? Well, it was noisy in there. I'm just not positive of everything that was said. Well, you were positive when you were questioned by Sheriff Madden. You were positive when you spoke to me less than two days ago. No further questions. The witness is excused. The prosecution calls as its next witness, Dr. Arnold Tully. Mr. Manis, I'm told that Dr. Tully is not in the courthouse, that he left Stockton late last night. Congratulations, Matt. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Pretty 
you need day's work. Tully, McGinn. The old one, too. Wiped out before they ever hit the witness chair. Well, I always did believe in research. Thought you'd be happier. I've never suborned a witness, Nat. The idea is to win. The idea is justice. Judd, you asked me to help you on this case. You knew exactly why I came back into this town. I need you and you need me. Let's stop your wailing about legal ethics. Right now, I'm just trying to save that boy's life. Thanks, Joe. Why so glum? You should be dancing a jig. Don't you realize that half the prosecution's case went right down the drain today? I didn't like the way it happened. All that happened is that a couple of liars lost their nerve. Is that all there was to it? Heath, a trial is a very unpredictable thing. You never know how a witness is going to behave till they get right into that chair. Somebody got to McGinn. Somebody got to Tully. Process of elimination. I pick Springer. Jared, I've never known you to compromise before. Don't start now. Listen, Heath, I'm no saint. You think I can put a bunch of abstract principles about my own flesh and blood? But if I get my freedom, I want it clean. How do I live the rest of my life not knowing whether I murdered a man? Never knowing for sure whether I'm innocent or not? I've got to know. Well, then I'll tell you right now, you didn't do it. Jared, stop coddling me! I'm not sure anymore. I think and I think. And I know what Charlie meant to me. And I think about seeing him on that filthy barroom floor, wasted and disgraced. Why wouldn't I kill somebody who did that to him? Because I know you're not built that way. Jared, I could have done it. All right, Heath, let's go over it again. Every detail right from the very beginning. You were running down the alley. What happened then? I reached the barn door and again and Tully tried to stop me. I brushed him aside and rushed into the barn. I heard a noise and that's when Vandiver and Parker got up from behind some boxes. Wait a minute. What noise? I don't know, just a noise. A noise from where? Think, Heath. From the loft. You heard a noise from the loft? T.J. <sighs> T.J. Dice? Dice was in the loft. Jared, he must have seen the whole thing happen. State your name, please. Gustavus S. Vandiver. Mr. Vandiver. What is it that you do? What is your occupation? I'm a land speculator. And I take it you own land here in Stockton? No, Mr. Atlas owned the land. We were partners. Well, how long did you know the deceased Parker Atlas? I met him during the war. Uh, same thing. Hey, same look, I've about. turned this town inside out and upside down. And he's gone, Jared. Nobody's seen him since Daily Shoot. Uh, uh, Keep looking, Nick. That's when we decided to become partners. All right. Now, Mr. Vandiver, please. Tell us all exactly what happened after you and Parker Atlas entered that barn. Well, we kept quiet, hoping he wouldn't find us. He? Well, he's Barkley. Go on. But somehow he knew we were in there. I don't know, maybe he heard the door shut. But he knew, and he came to get us. Mr. Vanderbilt. Exactly what do you mean by get? I mean kill. It was written all over his face. Craziness. He was practically slobbering at the mouth. Well, Mr. Vandiver, what, if anything, did you do? Well, we didn't stand still and uh, we didn't have many choices. The back door was the only way out. 
So you headed immediately for that back door. That's right. The first thing I knew, I uh, heard a shot. That one missed. And then as I was trying to open the door, Barkley rushed up behind Parker. He shoved his pistol into Parker's back. That was the one that did it. Parker's dead before he hit the floor. Mr. Vandiver, how is it that you survived? Doc Tully. Uh, he hit Barkley with an axe handle. And so, Mr. Vandiver, you saw Heath Barkley thrust his gun into the back of Parker Atlas and shoot him down in a fit of wanton rage. Yes, sir. I did. Your witness. Mr. Bannevere, you say that you were a, uh, how did you say it, a land speculator? That's right. In Denver. Around Denver. And you met the deceased Parker Atlas during the war. That's right. Would you say that you uh, served with distinction? Well, I like to think I did. Mm -hmm. You two were in the same outfit, weren't you? The second, uh, was it the second Georgia volunteer? He was a lieutenant, I was a sergeant. Sergeant? That's right. Well, that's odd. Got you listed here as a private, Private August Davis S. Vanderveer. I would like to see what that is, please. It's an official document from the archives of the 2nd Georgia Volunteers. The names of men who deserted in the face of enemy fire. Gentlemen, I have a little present for you. Come on, get in there. Well, well. Hello, TJ. Where'd you find him, Nick? Hagersville, under a rock. You're going to get into a lot of trouble for this. Oh, really? Heath tells me he saw you in that barn, T.J. He's lying. I wasn't even in town. That's not the truth. I'm going to put you on the stand, T.J., and I can make you talk, believe me. It won't do you no good. Take him home with you, Nick. I'll get a subpoena from Judge Lansbury. Come on, T.J., come on with me. You can help me saw a little firewood. What? Firewood, you can help me saw it. No, no, see, I'm going to more things to do for you. Yeah. Jared, are you out of your mind? You know what he could do to us? It's what Heath wants. Heath wants? Heath wants what? The truth, no matter what it is. As big a fool as you are. It runs in the family. Change his mind. His life is your responsibility. You didn't get to know him very well, did you? What's the matter with him? Has he got a guilty conscience? Well, let me tell you something about human nature, Jared. Weak. Be down on his hands and knees, thanking God for his deliverance. I've got an eyewitness, Nat, and I'm going to use him. You're going to hang your brother, that's what you're going to do. Now, that wouldn't bother you very much, would it? The only thing that gives you any pain is the thought of losing to Manus. You're the loser, Chad. He's your brother. Would you state your full name, please? Thomas James Dice. Where were you last employed, Mr. Dice? Handyman in the saloon. I see. On the night that Parker Atlas was killed, were you in the storage barn behind that saloon? Yes, sir. What were you doing there? In minding my own business. I didn't ask you that. I was up in the loft. Stacking whiskey cases. I see. And while you were in that loft, did anyone else enter that barn? Atlas, Vandiver, and your brother Heath came in. Will you tell us what you saw, Mr. Dice, after those men came into the barn? Nothing. Did you have your eyes shut? No. Now, 
Mr. Dice, this is a scale drawing of that barn. This is the figure of a man with his back against the farthest corner of the loft, a man of your approximate height. This arrow represents his line of sight. Now you'll notice, with his back against the farthest corner of the loft, he has a perfectly clear view of the floor below. Now I'll ask you again, Mr. Dice, what happened after those men came in? Please, leave me be. I don't want to get involved. You don't want to get involved. All my life, I've lived clean. Never no trouble, never. Walk away, don't get yourself mixed up in other people's messes. Have you ever for one brief moment thought what it would be like? What it really would be like to be in some terrible trouble and desperately need someone's help, only that person wouldn't give that help because they refused to get involved? Don't you think you have cowered from the responsibilities of life long enough, Mr. Dice, because this time you are involved? You were in that barn, and you saw Parker at the skill. I know it, the judge knows it, and the jury knows it. And if you refuse to tell us what happened, you will not only be guilty of perpetuating a worthless existence, you'll be criminally guilty of withholding evidence. T.J. All I want you to do is simply tell the truth. Nothing will happen to you. Nothing except maybe the beginning of a new life. You were in the loft stacking whiskey cases. Three men came in. Parker Atlas, Gus Vanderveer, and Heath Barkley. What happened? They started to argue, the three of them. Then Atlas moved toward your brother. They were going to fight it out because of what Atlas had done to Charlie Whitehorse. The other fellow, Vandiver, he moved up behind Atlas and pulled his pistol. But he kept it hid behind Atlas' back. Go on. About that time, Doc Tully came in and picked up an axe handle. Your brother Heath didn't see him because he was watching Vandiver. He must have known that Vandiver had his pistol out because he said, get away from there. That's when it happened. Doc Tully swung the axe handle and drove your brother forward into Atlas, and Atlas got pushed back, and well, that's what did it. Did what? Killed him. Killed him? Yes, sir. Are you stating under oath? That it was Gus Vanderveer's pistol that discharged and killed Parker Atlas? Just a minute. Mr. Barclay's gun was fired. It's here as evidence. Yes, but Mr. Vanderveer fired it. He told Doc Tully that if they didn't blame it on Heath, they'd have more trouble than they could handle. Thank you, Mr. Dice. Mr. Manis, do you have any questions? No questions. Case dismissed. <laughs> well, congratulations, Counselor. But I still think you were wrong. No reason for you to take that risk. There was plenty of reason, Mr. Springer. I had to know the truth. So long, Gerald. Goodbye, Dad. Let's go home. All right. Oh, Keith. I'm mighty glad things turned out the way they did. But uh, I have to admit, I'm going to miss you around my jail. You know, this young man plays a pretty fair hand of poker. Well, which reminds me, Sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, don't look so sad, Fred. You can consider that payment for all that bad food you forced them to eat. <laughs> Sir.
truth in my lie when I'm lost in the dark You're my stars in the sky like a ship in the night Without you I'm adrift You're my gift, swift lift when I need that shift Yeah, I need you on repeat, no fade out You're my melody, no break, no way out In the chorus of my life you play loud In my heart, in my soul you stay proud I wow Here's to you, the beats in my heart, together never apart.